Hi everyone, team member Mark Sheeran here. Listen, everybody's been asking why we switched to the Skinner peep sites uh, this year. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of reasons. First of all, the owner of Skinner Sites, Andy Larson, was willing to collaborate with us to build the best ghost site for tracking on the market. And uh, he took our input and really put it into practice. And uh, the, the, the aperture, the ghost ring itself is thinner, so it allows more light in. Uh, it's all steel construction. It's got a lifetime warranty. And, and it's also a very elegant site. So uh, there, there are some other features as well. The, the ghost site itself is dovetailed into the body of the site, which makes it really, really sturdy, and it can't fall out of adjustment. And between that and the fact that it's all steel and, uh, and the peat site is optimized for the tracker and the still hunter, it's an amazing site. So you can go on to bigwoodsbucks.com and get your BWB tracker series peep site today. All right, good luck on the hunt. This is the Big Woods Bucks Podcast. Come explore the big woods and timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of Big Woods Whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature Big Woods Bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the big woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big Woods Bucks podcast. I'm your host, Hal Blood. And uh, today we're down here at Rick Labby's estate down in Smithfield with a special guest. <laughs> me and, uh, me and, Joe, me and uh, Joe drove down here to uh, interview our guest, um, Bern Bomar. And uh, did I say that right? Yeah, Bern Bomar. Bern yep. Bomar. Yeah. Yep. If you look at the spelling, it's Bulmer. When you guys say it, it's Bulma. Well, <laughs> so that's probably what he, he's it's probably a, it's used a main to go. Thing. And, yeah, he's <laughs> used probably used to going by that though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Rick prefers that you'd refer to this as a ranch ever since he's been watching Yellowstone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rick's ranch. Be careful! You'll yeah. be going to the train station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty soon he's going to have a big archway out at the head of the driveway there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Labby, thought about it. Labby Ranch. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> All right. Burn. So, uh, anyways, Burn has uh, got the distinguished honor of being the oldest gentleman or the oldest person in the state of Maine to shoot a buck or a deer, I guess, in general, but a buck. He shot a six point buck last fall at 100 years old. It's quite an accomplishment. How long have you been hunting, Bird? Ever since I was 10, 12 years old. Okay. So you've got 90 years' experience. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. <laughs> what, okay. Where'd you grow up, Bird? I grew up in Oakland. Right, right, right here. Yeah, yeah, well, he was born. I was born right here in Smithfield. Right down the road, 100 yeah. years ago. Yep. <laughs> My God. <laughs> yeah. Things looked different 100 years ago here, didn't they? Yep. Everything was horse and buggy. There <laughs> yeah. was very few automobiles. The first cars I remember was, the, all the cars was black. Of course, I was young. I didn't pay much attention. But all of a sudden, there was this green one, a 1925 Chevrolet, and I can remember that. <laughs> nice. 1925. So, did, did you buy one, Burn? No, I didn't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> My father had a Overland uh, open touring car where it had the bows over the top of it. My brother and I would grab the bows and haul it at that, put the brakes on, we'd swing forward, give her the gas, we'd swing back and <laughs> forth. <laughs> uh, we had a great time in. No seat belts. <laughs> no. <laughs> no seat belts. Yeah, living on the edge. Oh, boy. 
So, so uh, this area right here, you grew up hunting right here, and this is where it all started, huh? Yes. Yeah, we grew. I grew up right around here, and I've always my relatives was around here. So I hunted and fished in Smithfield more than any other place. Yeah. However, when I settled down, I bought land on Meslonsky Lake in Oakland, where I still live. Yeah. Live How, by, by yourself? I do now. Yeah. I was in the Army. I walked into the Tencent store in Belton, Texas in 1942, before Christmas. This red-headed girl took my eye, and <laughs> so I started talking with her, but she had a ring on. I noticed the ring. I thought she was married, so I just walked off. I got back to camp, and I got thinking that ring was gold. Maybe she isn't married. I should find out. So I went back out. They said, she's quit. She didn't work here anymore. I said, she married? Oh, no. No, they said, she's not married. So I didn't see her again. A month, maybe I happened to be in town. I went to the movies. She was there. I said... You with somebody? She said, yes. I said, did Jim, let me take you home. <laughs> <laughs> she said, no. I came with him. I go home with him. I turned around walked off. And as I walked off, she says, keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Suave. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't see her again till March, I guess. I'm walking down the street. I met her. I, what are you doing? She said, I'm going to a picnic. You want to go? I said, yeah. So we went to the picnic. After the picnic, we had a hot dog. I mean, a Hamburg. Went to the movies. I took her home. Do you remember what movie you saw? And she says, uh, I mean, I, I said, well, well, we've been together all afternoon. We know each other. Shall I come back and keep moving? She <laughs> said, keep back come back and I did all summer I hurt my hip that fall and the army doctors didn't know what had them do they still don't today they said it's not our fault we're not going to pay you nothing and they have kept their word <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> and uh, we're going to discharge you told me the date so I went and told her the date. I said, I'll come see you once more. That was it. But I, when I came in that night, she lived off the bus route, but she was right out to the bus route. So I told the bus driver, let me off here. He did. My feet didn't hit the ground. She said, I made up my mind. I wanted to say what to, but I thought just a minute. And I said, so what's the verdict? She says, I'm going home with you. I said, not unless we're married. <laughs> I said, I, you're only 17. I said, I ain't crossing no state lines with you. She said, I know that. <laughs> so four days later, well, she says, next thing I said, you got to have a wedding ring? She said, yeah, let's go temple and buy one. So we did. The next thing was four days later, we was married. Four days after that, we was on the train for Maine. And it lasted 68 years. Holy smokes. Nice. It's <laughs> the way it's story. supposed to be. Yeah. And that's that's the story. I had a good married life. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, she was a great woman. Yeah. How many kids did you have? Just one. Just one? Yeah. And now, she's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, a you tough got that one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got that right. Oh, we did forget to mention that, that Byrne is Rick's grandfather. On his oh, you didn't you didn't start that off to begin no, with? No, I oh, didn't. Okay. I forgot that. I had to slip <laughs> yeah. that in there. So on his mother's side, it's it's uh, Rick's grandfather. Well, yeah. what got us started on this hunting business? I was a trained. I had been trained. I was a trained watch repairer, watchmaker, and uh, I was working in a jewelry store in 1947. And a friend of mine came in with a friend of his, and he said he wants to buy a watch for his wife. So I showed him some watches. 
He said, I'll take, I like that Miss Bulova, $35 watch. And then he hit me with a, he said, I got a piece of land over in Smithfield. I want to trade for it. Well, I said, you mean I'd have to fill up the money? He said, yeah. Well, I said, I better talk with my wife before I pull a trick like that. <laughs> so, come in tomorrow. He said, okay. I came home, I told my wife, she said, yeah, we should buy it. So I went to the, my employer, and I said, how much cost me for that watch? He said, well, since you're an employee, $15. <laughs> Jeez, so what a uh, <laughs> So I bought the watch, gave him the watch. He gave me the deed to the land, and this was 1947, and we still own it. Beautiful. Wow. It's a hunting Rick camp. owns yeah. it now. <laughs> How many acres was it? Fifteen acres. Fifteen acres. Dollar that, an acre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's the land where your camp is down yeah. here? Yeah, over in on Green Mountain. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's some story. <laughs> that was land that uh Bessie owns. There was a hundred and sixty acres. And Alfred Witham was a good friend of mine, lived here in Smithfield. He came to me and he said, we can sell you that 160 acres. He said, if you got $500. I said, hell, $500 might as well be $5 million. I ain't got it. So I didn't get it, but Bessie did. But all the land around the land that I did own is company land now. It's thousands of acres that Rick can hunt on. Nice. <clears throat> a little postage stamp in the middle of uh, yeah. a beautiful piece yeah, of woods. Great that's spot. great. Yeah. Yeah. What a story. That's where you I didn't it. realize that's how you, you ended up there, Rick. Oh, I thought I told you that story. For a watch. Yeah, for a yeah. watch. Yeah. $15 watch. And that's yeah. where you found them sheds yesterday. It is, yeah. 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 Rick found a nice set of nice set deer of sheds. sheds. His buck come up to his yard there and yeah. left them there for him. I act, I, so I, I would have shot this deer, but I passed him because the camera guy, Brian, was coming up to right. follow me and had that scheduled. So, of course, me, I, I got to be in the woods every day. So this was on Friday morning, and I was sitting in a stand that first. I like to set like the first hour, especially if there's no snow. So I sat on a uh, stand that first hour, and this buck come in, and I watched him. I was going to shoot him because I knew he was he was a big one. And then the more I watched him, I said, ah, I'll see him if I don't kill one next week up north. I'll, I'll see him again. I said, got the whole season. Yeah. And uh, he went, so I passed him. I let him go. And uh, he ended up, uh, I, I didn't kill a deer that week. Because I had to go back to work, and uh, he went nocturnal. Never saw him again. Right. You know how that goes. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's going to be something next year. But he he come he's... from he come from a good mile <clears throat> to my field and just dropped his horns thirty feet apart, <laughs> just to say. What was he saying? <laughs> Thanks for letting me live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here's my horns. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so burn. Did you? Did you hunt a lot down there on that land oh, over yeah. the years? Oh, yes. Yep. Every fall. Uh, I had a shack camp there. It's now the garage. And uh, in 1968, we went over there at the November 11, stayed overnight, woke up the next morning, and there was a foot of snow on the ground. Trees was heavy with snow. I didn't know I wanted to get out and walk around all through that. I told Peck, I said, I'll go around the property line. So I did, and I had been three quarters of the way around, and no sign of anything. I thought, well, I'll take a shortcut back to the camp. And I'd come out, and it was all, I couldn't believe my eyeballs, but there was a big buck deer right in front of me. 
with his head up eating cedar. Now I pulled my gun up and the, the covered the barrel was covered with snow. I didn't realize that, but too late, you can't take the snow off of it. So I just put the ball of snow on his chest and pulled the trigger. And he dropped right there. He went, Ugh! and that's <laughs> all. Down he went. He <laughs> never struggled or nothing that killed him dead right there. Yep. Two hundred, nice. and he weighed two hundred five pounds. That was his best one. Yeah, that, that's the biggest one I ever got. What was you using for a gun burn? Thirty thirty Winchester. I could have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got it right around the corner. Oh, nice! To show you guys, yeah, yeah. You ever shot a deer with it? Nope, but I'm gonna. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That should be the film next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He get, he gave it to me about a year and a half ago. I bought that gun, brand new, 1947, fifty nine dollars. <laughs> wow. Mount Goldman Ward. It paid for it ten dollars a month. How long was the background check back then? You just <laughs> sign, just sign your name. Yeah, yeah that's what I think. Yeah. Here's, your, here's your gun. Just oh, you mean about? No, I was joking. Yeah, you, you're <laughs> you mean, right. You mean the background check on the gun? Yeah, I was. I, I knew they didn't have them. <laughs> Only background check. They was worried about money. Yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah. they're going to get their money that's all you could buy all the guns <laughs> it makes me think we went to Canada one time we were staying up there up near the border we decided we'd go over we'd been hunting we get up to the border and we said we got guns we've been hunting that any problem nah he said go ahead we went into Canada we don't care if you got a truckload of guns. <laughs> Do cross a border any way you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, different times. Change now. <clears throat> yeah. So t tell the story about you told me the other day of how you used to hunt off a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have well, a lot of transportation. Yeah, you know, we didn't have transportation. I had an uncle over in Canaan. And I'd go up and get him, and he'd sit on the back of the motorcycle. That's all I had for transportation. Have a rifle in each hand. And there was a farm, an abandoned farm way back in. And the bushes had grown up along the edges of the road. But you could ride the motorcycle right down there. So I go over there one frosty morning, each, sitting on the back with a rifle in each hand, and the frosty fr Bushes hitting his ears. You should have heard him bellow. <laughs> I, said, I said, we'll never see a deer today, not the way your hall and take it. <laughs> what kind of motorcycle was it? Harley Davidson. A 19, I think that was a 1934. Still and, got it? No. Well, I wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> How many of those Harley Davidsons did you have, you told me? All used, but I had 18. Yeah. Holy I mean, smokes. Wow. Yeah. You could you buy an old boat, buy the motorcycle, $25. We got a lot of pictures of him with his motorcycles. Oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 I heard a story. I heard a story. I don't know if he'll admit it, that he used to ride down through Oakland and stand right on the seat. Just, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the cops, the cops took a dim view of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the cop stopped me and he said, don't do that again. He said, you do that again, I'll arrest you. So I didn't do that again. <laughs> That's all it took. <laughs> yeah. So tell, tell the story about shooting that buck with me this year. Oh, he came and got me, took me over to the shooting shack and... We got in there, settled down to watch the field. In the morning? And he... Afternoon. Yeah, it was in the afternoon. Yeah. Had an hour, an hour and a half before a shooting time left. So we're sitting there, and 
he brought, I didn't have the 30 30, I had the gun that he sh sh supplied and sat down. Two bucks came out, an eight pointer and a six. They came right down towards us. In fact, they moved down, and they, one of them was so I couldn't see him good, the eight pointer, but I could see the six point pretty good. So I decided I'd take the hip, and I shot him. After I shot him, he ran back to the woods, but his tail was down, so I figured I'd hit him pretty hard, and the other one went with him. It didn't take him only a very few minutes, and the big one come right back by us, <laughs> Could have shot him real easy, but I'd already shot one. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't tempted, was you? Oh, yeah, I was tempted. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but, uh, you had to cat. You've already shot one. You can't do it again. There he is, eight points right in front of you, walking right by. He was close to us. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> nice. Oh, boy. Yeah. You showed a little restraint. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. uh, I, I got a question for you, Vern. Back back in those old days when you started hunting down in this area, uh, was there more or less deer than there is now? I'd say there was more. Oh, there was. Okay. Because there was farms and there was fields and there was stuff for them to eat and they hung around those farms. Uh, I used to hunt over Stevens's. Uh, they had a big back field, and uh, that they, they had field here. Okay, yeah, they had crops down there, and it was re it was out away from buildings and stuff. It was always deer there. Mm -hmm. Almost every evening they'd come out. How many might you see in one evening? Three, four. Yeah, and I don't want that. They're not big enough. Uh, I don't want to shoot a doe. Uh, then that's oh, that's the buck. <laughs> Shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so was uh, did you take Ginny hunting when she was young? Would you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I took her hunting over to the hunting camp, especially. But she never took to hunting too much. He did. He was uh, seven, maybe. And I had a 20-gauge shotgun. You're talking about Rick now. I'm talking about Rick, yes. <laughs> so we go out shooting. And it was before season. And where the road run up, we'd be out, up over a little bounce. Look, there's a deer eating apples under an apple tree. And he, he said, shoot him, shoot him. I want to shoot him. I wouldn't let him. He was mad at me. Probably still is, but he didn't shoot. <laughs> no, I got over it. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to shoot that 20 gauge shotgun. I said, You're not big enough. That gun will shoot, knock you down. He said, I want to shoot, so I let him. It did knock him down, yeah. but he got right up. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, when did you shoot your first deer, Rick? I think I was 12. Shot my first deer. Yeah. yeah, same as me. Yeah, I shot that right in Smithfield, just up off the railroad tracks. Yeah, sitting all by myself at 12 years old. And uh, I was probably a half a mile down in the woods there, sitting on a knoll, and this seven-point buck come running up, and he just stopped right there and looked at me. It was Thanksgiving Day, actually. That was my first buck. Yes. Shot nice. him right in the chest. <laughs> He should have shot a lot of deer. Well, I've shot about 25 in a lifetime. Yeah. 15 with that 30-30. They got us right there right now. It's pretty good numbers. You got them all tallied up and counted for. Well, I, and Rick, Rick kind of took the uh, legacy from there, right? I think Continue so. you go on the tradition. He's yeah. been to uh, he's been to Anacostia Island with me. Oh yeah, a couple of trips. I took him there with the kids, and 
and uh, that was that was a great trip. Yeah, we did. Yeah, he was feeding deer out of his hand there on Anacostia Island. Yep. And then shooting them the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same deer. Yeah. <laughs> Not the same deer. No. <laughs> yeah, I got a picture of that on the wall at home. Nice. Yep. How long ago did you do that? Oh, let me see. The, probably 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He's back when you were a young fellow. Over to the hunting camp one time. Stain wall runs down, there's a gap in it, and a qua- uh, it's a corner. And as I was coming back, I heard this something's coming through the woods and making this. So, boy, I got him this time. And I'll just stop right there. Well, in, by this time, two bull moose showed up right then, big ones. One of them saw me, and he dropped his head right down, hair stood up. I, Cocked at 30-30, jumped up on the stone wall. I don't want to shoot you, but I will. You ain't going to get me. <laughs> <laughs> and he stood up there and shook his head back and forth. He wasn't over 15 feet away from me. I had that gun right on him. Then he calmed down, lifted his head, looked at me, stuck his neck out smelling, and then he smelled a while, and he walked off. And I was very relieved when they did. <laughs> that, that's something that you've seen a huge change in over the years is the moose population. I mean, you think about the what it used to be like where they were pretty much, yeah. well, All, back when he when Byrne was younger, I mean, yeah. they were pretty much All, gone. Yeah, almost extinct. Yeah. Didn't see many. Yeah. Yeah, there used to be a lot of moose. Yeah, even in this area? Oh, yeah. Yep. See them often, often. Oh, is that right? Well, the last moose season was in Waldo County in 1936. That was the last season they had. So there was more moose there than northern Maine. Right. Because in northern Maine, I think they got shot off for the you know lumber camps and market hunting. Yep. Market, yeah, all of that stuff. But Yeah, and I don't, I don't think they had the moose up there because the, there was just too much forest, not, not yeah. enough feed. Not enough cuts. Right. And, right. Exactly. Yeah. Ticks, ticks killed some too. Ticks killed quite a few. Yeah, of them. yeah, and still are. Yeah. So tell tell that story about uh, you told me one time when that game warden picked you up and gave you a ride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my uncle and I was hunting over to Canaan, and we was walking down a gravel road. This car come along was a game warden. Said, you fellas want to ride? We said, sure. So we climbed in, guns and all. And we got down to a break in the road. We said, we let us off here. We're going to hunt this area. We get out of the car, and he said, those guns aren't loaded, are they? We said, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's supposed to ask when you get in the truck, isn't he? That's what I told him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I never thought of it. Nobody ever thought of it, that about being loaded. Yeah. And I got caught once for having a loaded gun in the car. That same Winchester, you get it cold, wet, and sometimes it wouldn't come out of the magazine. And it still had the shelf in it, and I didn't know it. Stable one stopped us, looked at the gun. This gun's loaded. Huh? Yeah. So I got nailed. That was a $5 fine. Yeah. Right? I don't know. I don't, it wasn't much. I think, well, I think we just had to pay the cost. Not much. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, the one knew it was a mistake, but he still. So it gave you the ticket, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, so Rick, Rick was saying when we got here, you were uh, you worked in the woods, right? Yeah. For all those years. Well, I worked for Diamond seven years, scaling, cruising stuff in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Marking paper lines. Um, yeah. Is what? Marking lines. My oh yeah, marking property lines. Yeah. Painting was, painting property lines. Was a lot of that work up north? All of it. All of it up north. Up around Dead River, 
We were riding up around Flagstaff, uh, I don't know, two yeah. e two years ago, yeah. and we're riding along, him and I, and uh, we were north of Flagstaff Lake there up in by Halfway Brook, and he says, stop right here. So I said, All right. He says, back up a little bit, and he says, you see that line, and you can just see a faint line of yellow paint on the trees, and he says, I marked that line back in the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right over here to North Pond. Right, that line that runs there, I painted that line. I helped swap it out and paint that one, too. <laughs> wow. Pretty good memory there, Burn. Oh, yeah. That property line over there went along. I could come close to the same spot today, but it goes along, and then 41 feet it sets over and goes again. <laughs> <laughs> 41 feet, you remember? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I never knew why, but it did. And I don't know if I should tell this, but there was seven acres that somebody else owned, and when they bought the farm, the seven acres was encompassed right in it. And whoever lost owned the seven acres, lost it. And wow. I may be the only living person that knows that today. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, but they, I, that just disappeared right over there. Seven acres on the water? No. No. And in the right-of-way that run into it, they built a house right in the right-of-way. Huh. <laughs> hey, Hal here. I want to talk a little bit about uh, our partnership with Onyx Hunt. Um, I've been using it for a while now, and if anybody knows me, they know I'm not a very techie person, but the Onyx app is really, it's a real time saver. I remember the days when... We poured over topo maps everywhere we was going to go and stuff, and I don't, uh, I don't do that quite as much anymore. Where it's really helped me is, is uh, scouting, you know, whether it's deer scouting, a moose, or even turkey hunting in the spring, which I do. It, uh, it really helps out. I don't have to spend as much time running around the truck burning up the gas. I, uh, I'm just basically using my Onyx. Got it on my phone. Don't even carry a GPS anymore. So uh, I just download the areas where I'm going to be hunting, whether it's up north moose hunting. And and uh, I use it mostly on the uh, satellite imagery. I like to see the, the cots and the clearings and the turkey hunting, the hidden fields and stuff. But uh, everybody's using it now from the game wardens to the to uh, land surveyors and, and uh, just a great tool. And uh, with our partnership with with uh, Onyx, if you use a code BWB, you're going to receive 20% off on your first premium or elite memberships. And you just go to onyxmaps.com slash hunt. You'll be glad you did. Good luck on the trail. I think for me, the most interesting aspect is the, the woods, you know, like what you were, what the woods were like, what you saw up in the North Country back then. Yeah. You know, just because it must have changed so drastically. You know, I'm, I think about that all the time when I'm walking and hunting or whatever. And He was telling me yesterday about him riding on the sleighs when they'd the old log haulers would haul the wood out on the sleighs, and he'd get up on top. He said he liked to ride on those sleighs. Yeah, well, on the sleds, you know. I, I like to see the runners follow along, and they'd slide this way or that way. What, did they have brakes on those sleighs? No. <laughs> no. So, so how do you deal with how they deal with hills? If you're going to go downhill, I don't know exactly how they did it. I forgot. But they'd throw a chain under the runner to hold the load back going downhill. Oh yeah, so some drag. Yeah. yeah. And haul it uphill. Roy Tracy's teams, he'd have eight or ten at a time. And they'd have one pair of horses, not hooked anything, to help any team that was overloaded, couldn't haul them over the hill. We lived there. I watched that every day that they did that. I watched them do it. Wow. Yeah. What, what was the years when that was? 28, 29, 30. <laughs> <Jeez>. Wow. <laughs> tell, tell how you used to go to school and the horse and buggy would pick you up. Yeah, when I first started school, 
They had what they called the town farm. Old people like me went to the town farm. You didn't get put in a nursing home. You went there. And they also ran the school bus from there. School bus was a a pair of horses or one horse in a wagon with a box built on it, a plank to set on, step to get up the back. Well, I was too little. I couldn't get up the back step. So the driver, Holly, said, come up here. So he said, climb up the wheel. So I climbed up the wheel. Give me your arm. So I give him my arm. He grabs me by the wrist, pulled, picked me up, thrown me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I started school, 1927. <laughs> One time when I was working for Diamond, we were cruising. It was in... Late September, the leaves had turned, the wind was blowing, and we were in an area of old trees. And to come a crash, we're unex- that's not unexpected, another crash. I said to Roger, Jesus, it ain't safe around here with all these old trees. Another crash. I said, guess it ended. I said, another crash. Looked around, there's a black bear headed right for us. <laughs> I mean, just bearing right down. I pulled out my gun, bang, I shot him. <laughs> when I hit, when that bullet hit him, his head come around, it was a twenty-two. He's looking right at us, just like y'all looking at me now. He started around watching us all the way. Roger said, keep shooting. And I said, not long, he's going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Any Cubs there with her? And what? Any Cubs there with her? No. She was all alone. No, no. I don't, I don't know if it was a male or a female. Yeah. He was a black male, that's what I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we saw many bears, many. They never bothered us. It, it, almost, they always ran. Maybe not all of them, but they, they didn't hang around us. So, so in those days, as I understand, the black bears were just more of a nuisance than anything. They, they weren't a game animal, right? No one hunted them. They were just always around. Well, some people hunted them just for sport, but not, not many. You know, and they, they didn't bother you. They came to the camp dumps, you know. Uh, I could have shot one any time. Yeah, when, there was a when, lot of bear around the dumps yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. the camp, of course, would dump, had extra food and throw stuff they away. So they would dump bears come every every day about. They just didn't bother you. So so were you working into logging camps? Were you actually staying out there for, would you so, stay in the woods for a period of time and then? Sometimes. Yeah. Stay up there a week. Yep. What was you doing, just trying to find the right wood for them to cut? No, I would be measuring it. Oh, after Scale they and everything cut they did cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say you as a truck driver, I I graded the wood what you haul for grade because they were making veneer, so you wouldn't want to haul a, lo- a bunch of junk wood. So I would grade it, measure it. That's what you hauled, and the cow wood would go one way and the good wood another way. And the kind, if it was white birch or if it was rock maple, green and all, I did kept it all separate. So all that wood was going in the river? No, no, trucked. trucked oh, it was it. all trucked, okay. That's what the re- reason for green, keep track how much money you got as a trucker. And they kept track of it, even if it was a company truck. Same thing. Was it... Uh- Everything they ran down the river back in those days, was that pulp or logs as well? We didn't run anything down the river. Okay, so it was all pulp in the river and then veneer on the trucks. The pulp, pulp mills did that. Yeah. Not, not Diamond was veneer. Yeah. They turned it into veneer, and then they made it into tongue blades, toothpicks, ice cream sticks, stuff like that. Yeah. And I was one winter assistant to the wood superintendent. They furnished me with a new car and 
expense account. I lived pretty good. <laughs> and But I didn't. There was one outfit. It's a little cantankerous to get along with. I didn't push them very hard. Wood superintendent went out in the woods. He looked, called me in the office one morning. He said, the deep snow, I see they're not cutting it down. I said, well, he said, you're supposed to see to it, they do. He said, you get out there and you see to it, they do. If you want, I'll take your ass out of that brand new car and your expense <laughs> account. <laughs> so I did. I, and the guy that was doing it, he, the job, the fellow that was actually doing the work, pretty bad about it. He didn't want to have to shovel down them trees. I said, we, there's two feet of wood there. You got to get it, go get it. He come after me with an axe. <laughs> I had a gun. He said, you got a gun? I said, yeah, you got an axe. <laughs> I said, you're fired. You're done. Take your horses and go back to Canada. So I went back the next week, and he's still there. And I, his boss was, what? how come he's still there? And he said, well, he said, he's the best man I got. And he said, he's sorry about everything, and we are taking, we are getting those stumps. We've gone back and cut them off. Anything that was two feet and better, go look. So I did. He said, you still wanted fired? He said, well, they was doing a good job. I said, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so I went and told Charlie Hovey, he said, he was the superintendent. He said, as long as we get the wood, you, you're all right. N nicest crew to work with after that you ever saw. You just had to set them straight, right? Huh? You just had to set them straight. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had another, there was a camp up to Dead River in July. And they were, I think there were six men there. And the guy told me, he said, they had, they had a winter refrigerator, a building built. He said, bring me up a side of beef. I said, hey, what an idea. You put beef in there? I said, the man will tear that damn down. Oh, he said, I don't think so. I said, I do. I said, I'm just the assistant. I'll ask Charlie Hovey. I told him. He said, no. Ah, he thought it to me. He said, it's their job. Let them do it if they want to. So I did. I told him what Charlie said. I go back a week later. There's no wood. Men are sitting around. The guy's suspenders is over one shoulder. His boots ain't tied up. Got a 30-30 running around there. <laughs> so what's going on? He said, well, there's a dead one over there. There's a dead one over there. There's a dead one. And they're all around here. I said, I told you so. What do you want to do? He said, the men won't work, so I'm closing her down. So we did. Closed the job. Too many bears. Too many bears. <laughs> wow. Jeez. So do you remember, uh, you keep talking, you know, you're talking about the Dead River, and I remember hearing about all the, the, the big deer yards up there. Were you up in the winter when the deer were yarding? Yeah. Up there? Yeah, there was a lot of deer. Yeah. A lot of deer. Big, big yards back then. Yep, they cut them all. There's none now. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were all along the river mostly. What, the deer? Yeah, the yards, the yard up along the river there. Yeah, it was It was the lake. By the time I... They had completely flooded that lake, I think, by 1947. And that got a bunch of the stuff. Did away with the yards. Yeah. That was the big culprit right there. Huh, flooding really? the lake, cutting all the trees around the lake. Yeah, yeah they cut everything. Do you, do you remember the town that was there? Yeah, Flagstaff? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hmm. I remember the valley. It was a beautiful little valley. Now it's all lake. And there was farms there. It was a nice little place. Gone. All underwater. Yeah. And Dead River ran through it. 
out to where the falls are now. Yeah, Grand Falls. Grand Falls, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what, then they put the dam in there. So. That must have been pretty controversial when they did that. People didn't care in those days. They just, what, the CMP came and bought all the, the houses up and then just yeah. flooded it all. Uh, there was very little said about it. Yeah. Huh. You know, people in Flagstaff got paid big money for their bips, and they was happy to, and they could go somewhere else. And they didn't care. Hmm. I, I heard there was a cemetery there that they dug up and moved or something when they flooded the lake. That probably is true, but I don't know anything about it. No. It probably was true. Huh. They say that, that cemetery, you know, if you're going up Wyman Lake and you get to the head of the lake just before the boat landing where the river comes in and meets the lake, yeah. that cemetery sets on the hill on the right. Yeah. Somebody told me, I don't know if it was him or who, that that used to be in the lake and they dug that all those graves oh, no up kidding. and moved them to that yes. hill. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it was you that told me that. Yes. Yeah. In 28, 9, 30, they built Wyman Dam. It was continued into the Depression, but that area prospered, and they built Wyman Dam. And they had a sluiceway over there and put lots of pulpwood in the river. You could put softwood in the river, floats. Hardwood. Right. Yeah. And they sent all the pulp down the river. Used to be solid full. Were the woods a lot more uh, softwood back then? It must have been a, a lot more softwood in the, than there was hardwood then. I worked in the Spring Lake one summer, two summers in fact. Beautiful spruce there, that big around and bigger. Should have been put in lumber. Beautiful. Cards and cards of it. Scott paper cut every single tree and put it in the pulp. Should have, you know, they didn't use it for what it should have been. The pulp, they, they just took it for pulp. <clears throat> they had so much wood, they... Thought nobody, it would last forever. Yeah, nobody cared. Of course, if the chainsaw, before the chainsaw... And even after the chainsaw, but cutting the wood by hand, they would have never cut it all. Right. Then they sat in with these machines that one man cut more wood in a day than a whole crew could in a week. Yep. And in that these machines would today will cut, load a truck with a proper cut log, 25 men couldn't do as much in a day as they will. I'd say it would take 35, 40 men. So, so you remember the transition from, from no mechanization at all before chainsaws oh, yes. to chainsaws. Yeah. Was that a big jump? Was that a big difference? In- yeah. Well, it was good cutting like the spruce I told you. I don't know this for a fact, but the word was out that Scott didn't keep you if you couldn't cut up six cod a day with a chainsaw. Mister, that's a lot of work. And those were heavy chainsaws then, too. Yeah, he's he's got, well, he, he did have probably 20, 25 chainsaws right from the old, I remember his old home light. And, uh, I mean, it was as big as a, a motor that would be on a trash pump. Or something nowadays, right? <laughs> you know, probably weighed twenty-five pounds. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Old red home light, loud as hell. Yeah. Guys never wore earplugs. No, either. nothing back then. No wonder they can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my brother had the first chainsaw I ever saw, and you tip it over, but you had to tip the carburetor. You had a float type carburetor. You had to. If you're going to cut this way, you had to turn the carburetor over. Huh. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I've seen the ones that have the, the whole bar turns with it so that the motor can stay upright. Yep. I've seen those before, but I never saw the carburetor. Yeah, I can't remember That's... what brand it was. 
It wasn't a brand that I've ever heard before or since, but he had one. Hmm. Yeah. When you were up there around the Dead River, did you have a deer hunt up there? Was you there in the fall to deer hunt? Oh, yeah. Oh, you shot some deer up there? Well, I was working. You, know, you can't hunt and work at the same time. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> he smiles. <laughs> if everyone could have seen his expression just now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So was that was that common with the crews? I mean, was obviously a lot of the guys hunted, so they probably tried to fit in a little bit of deer hunting while they were up oh, there. Oh yeah, everybody carried a gun. Everybody either they carried pistols as well as rifles. They probably yeah. ate a little deer meat in the fall, didn't they? In the lumber camps? Oh no, you couldn't do that. Oh, you couldn't? No, no. That's <laughs> be- you had that's beef you're eating. <laughs> Lean beef, huh? Smelled like deer meat cooking, but no, that's beef. <laughs> what? No, it's beef. You can't. It's against the law to be eating deer meat. <laughs> was the uh, was the cooking as good as you always hear about in the lumber it, camp? It was. It was. Those French cooks in the woods, man, they feed was super and. Uh, I ate for nothing. They used to feed me because I worked for the company. I get fed for nothing. Otherwise, people had to pay. It, really? Yeah. The guy, the guys working had to. Some of them huh. depends. They was a contractor. Yeah. Right. Or if they were a company paid employee. Yeah. Do you uh, do you recall when the uh, the POW camp was up there? Yeah, that's before my time. Oh, it was? Yes, I know exactly where it was. I can take you right to it today. Yeah. Nancy's uh, grandmother know, on her father's side, I, I can remember her when we first got married, but that's what she did. She cooked in lumber camps. She lived right in Norwich Walk, uh, right when you come to the intersection by Cumberland Farms. Yeah. And if you... If you turned uh, and went up the hill, of course, Dunkin' Donuts is there now. There was a brown house that sat right there. That's where she lived, and, and that's what she did her whole life, cooked in lumber camps. Oh. Yeah, they said she was a hell of a cook. <clears throat> yeah. Had to put the calories to them, keep yeah. the production going. Yeah. yeah they say they used to, them guys used to eat five times a day. I bet they did. Yeah, I get going before daylight, Especially have breakfast. In the cold weather. Yeah, they'd have a breakfast, and I guess they'd bring out food to the in the woods at like nine o'clock, and they'd have lunch at noon, and they'd get another afternoon meal. Sounds like a day of tracking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a little yeah. bit here, a little bit there. So Burn is now the uh, main state deer hunting. Uh, you know, he's got the distinguished honor of being the oldest yeah. buck hunter in Maine. He's, he's, You're going to try and break your record every year. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe that eight point will be around this year, huh? No, Nancy killed him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Rick. I have to raise another one. Yeah. <laughs> There's some more maybe, coming along. Maybe those sheds that are sitting on the counter behind you there, maybe that one. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'd be good. He probably won't make it this year if I see him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to more stories next year, Burn. More stories, okay. Yep. We're gonna we're gonna follow you this year. I bet you there's gonna be a lot of guys following you <laughs> next year when you go deer hunting. Yeah, he's getting famous now. Yeah. 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 yeah well I'm not a I'm not a great hunter. I just lucked out, that's all. He my grandson is a great hunter. <laughs> he likes yeah. to hunt though. He you know Yeah, he, I like he's it. always yeah. tur- he he turkey hunts every spring, kills a, a tom every spring. Oh, does he? Yeah, he goes over and sets in that shooting shack, and and uh, he sh- he shot a tom now for the last five years in a row, I yeah. think. Yeah. Every spring, you call him in, or just let him come by. Just let him come by. Yeah. There's oak trees there. And they come down right out the oak trees, walk right up, and shoot them. <laughs> He'll call me. Yeah, I got one. Come get it. <laughs> come get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, wow. we shot a lot of game out of that shooting check, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, a lot happened over the years. A lot of fun. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, it's. I think it's it's one of those things too. I mean, I could listen to the stories all day, you know. And and I know as you sit around, they all the stories just keep coming to the top of your yeah. mind. What your your recall is great. I love hearing back in 1936. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, uh, there's steep bank like that down the Dead River. And the road ran along here. I had a, a brand new Ford truck, 69. And I said to my wife, I said, you want to go riding in the woods today? She said, yes. So we go up there and wait. A little bit of a grade truck just drifted down. And as we came, there's a bear laying right in the road, sun shining on that black fur. That truck just drifted. He didn't know it was coming. He's laying there, and all of a sudden, he scratched it, caught sight of that truck. He on his feet, and it was steep, steep. You should have seen him get down over that bank. He hit that river like he was. <laughs> you should have seen him when he hit into that water. He <laughs> went in that water right out of sight. <laughs> that must have been a sight to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, it was. We got a big laugh out of that. I yeah. bet. He shot a moose with me uh, the very first year we had a moose season, I think it was, in, in the 80s there. No, it was 96. 96. Yeah, maybe it was, 96. <laughs> <laughs> well, been a long time. Yeah. But, yeah, he shot a moose with me there, 50, 56 inches wide, I think, up there to Jackman at camp. You still got the head, didn't you? Oh, yeah, it's at camp. Yeah. Hanging on the wall. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Back when we had... Nice. Couple more moose hanging around. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of moose then. Yeah, I think we saw eight to ten bulls that morning. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of moose in those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, too many really. Well, they did. Yeah, uh, they're giving moose. out too many permits. They ought to stop for a while. Little build back up. I think it's the ticks getting them burned. Well, I do too. I think the ticks are. Yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah I've noticed. I've noticed uh, a lot of beds with blood in them. Yeah. A lot of what? A lot of moose beds with blood in them from the ticks. Yeah. They got the ticks on them. They lay down and yeah. smush yeah. the blood right all in over. The snow. Yeah. 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 Well, see it. Telltale yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah. Along with that, it, it irritate them in the tough windows just too much. You yeah. can't stand it. Yep. Yeah. A moose has got to learn that he can come in and be. Shot with something, but it's pretty hard to teach them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Burn, this has been great talking with you because, you know, as everybody gets older and fades away, it's the stories that keep everybody else going <laughs> yeah. and striving to do some of the same things and keep the tradition going, right? Yeah, everything's changed. It's too many people in the world now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm serious in my, what I'm going to say is I think something big is going to happen. Something big to kill us off. Yeah. Mother Nature takes care of everything else. Yeah, I've always said that. That's why we get the moose ticks and... Them deer diseases and everything is when it gets overpopulated, Mother yeah. Nature's taking over. Yep, right? yep, that's true. Yep. I think something big is going to happen. Yep. Well, some of us wished we lived back in them days when you started, Vern. So, well, it yeah. was it was pretty good. Of course, the Depression days. When I in '36, I went over to Bill Blake. I said, I heard you wanted help. He said, yes. Can you drive a pair of horses? I said, yes. He said, can you build a load of hay that'll stay on? I said, yes. He said, all right, I'll try you out. He said, you come over Monday morning, 6 o'clock. I'm paying 10 cents an hour. It's 10 hours a day, and you bring your own dinner. And I worked for him in the summer of 36 and 37. I had six dollars cash Saturday night. Six bucks, <laughs> cash money. God, I was rich. 
<laughs> God, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> From the time I went in business, he always preached to me, save every nickel you make, <laughs> you know, always save more than half. But then yeah. I didn't pay attention. Real recent, within the past month, and people they sent to help me, I had a $2,000 nest egg that I would pay, like, got to have a tooth out, I'd take it. I just kept it around, you know, pay the heat bill, or what, pay it, take it. She stole it. Oh, no kidding. Yep, she stole $2,000 off wow. of me. Let's go, yeah. Yeah. Let's go find her. Yeah. Let's go find her. We're mounting the horses we got rid up. Of, we got rid of her. <laughs> Back to Yellowstone, yeah. to the train station. <laughs> yeah, to the train station. I haven't let him watch Yellowstone yet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he doesn't have it on his TV. <laughs> he'd you like that. Set that. Oh, you got to set that up for him. Yeah, he'd like that. Yeah. 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 Well, Byrne, we sure appreciate it. I've, I know I've enjoyed it, yeah. sitting yep. down with you. I have, too. All right, well, let's yeah. do it again. All right. <laughs> All right, after this fall, when you shoot your buck, we'll do it again. <clears throat> Sounds good. Well, Thank you, Rick, for having us over here and – yeah, setting yeah, it no up. problem, guys. Yeah. Well, anyways, so I'm sure everybody enjoyed it as much as we did. And uh, till next week, good luck on the trail. Adios. Hey, Hal here. Hey, uh, one thing I realized as I was getting older is I, when I was younger, I never really planned for retirement. And uh, so my client for the last couple of years, Jerry Smith, had been talking to me about it a little bit. And... Uh, I don't know when I'm going to retire, but I definitely got to get ready for it. But uh, Jerry owns a company called the Northern Way Wealth Management. And uh, he's got a program he calls the Northern Way Retirement GPS. And uh, it's a way to, you can plan to get your finances in order and and live your best life, which means time in the woods to track down some big bucks. Because, you know, the problem is, is not getting enough time in the woods for most people. And, uh, you know, whether it's family or other hobbies, or, you know, just financial obligations, it cuts into your hunting time. So Jerry has partnered with Dave Ramsey in his Smart Vest program where he helps folks in his process. And uh, Jerry has partnered with, with us at Big Woods Bucks to offer you your very own no-cost or obligation in Northern Way Retirement GPS just call or shoot Jerry a text at 715-551-4181 and mention the promo code BWB. Jerry's going to uh, help you get uh, some retirement time and some more income so you can hunt some more. Good luck on the trail. Investment advisory services through Retirement Wealth Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Northern Way Wealth Management, Retirement Wealth Advisors, and Dave Ramsey are not affiliated. Hi, everyone. Big Woods team member Mark Sheeran here. Many of you know that I have a passion for helping people solve their addictions permanently. As a matter of fact, me and my team have spent the last 31 years helping more than 20,000 people move on from their addictions. So know this. If you or someone you love want to move on from an addiction for good and you don't want to be stuck in a rehab or 12-step meetings or endless therapies, then you might want to learn about the Freedom Model and the St. Jude Retreat. To learn more, give us a call at 888-424-2626. All calls are confidential. Here's that number again, 888-424-2626, or go to SoberForever.net for more information. I really look forward to helping you end your addictions for good. Here's that number one last time, 888-424-2626. Take care. Hey guys, Joe here. Wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Lake Parlin Lodge. We're a... Uh, Four season lodge located just south of Jackman. We've got cabins, lodge rooms, mini lodge. We're a big snowmobile destination in the winter, full restaurant, bar, all the amenities that you need for your trip. Open all obviously through the summer, right on the lake. Kayaks, canoes, all included with the cabin. We also do a lot of weddings, so if you're looking for a destination wedding, we can do a wedding up to 200 people. And uh, of course, we've got our hunting season, moose season, deer season. So check us out. We're at lakeparlinlodge.com. Hey, Hal here. Just want to take a minute to talk about the hunting club. And uh, you can join by going right online at uh, bigwoodsbucks.com. But anyways, I've got uh, 
all my information is going in there, and it's a place where you can get together and and uh, look at my films, tips, writings, and all of that. And the best part is 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 forums for you to communicate with you know the rest of the club members, talk about big wood stuff and all of that. So, anyways, thirty six bucks a year, cheaper than getting a Starbucks once a day. So, join up and hope you see you're on there. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Good luck on the trail.